as a movement, as a conservative movement, from one celebrity to the next, from one flavor of the month to the next, and expect to be taken seriously. Especially when the people who you're now putting up on that pedestal, as a leader, is really someone who doesn't deserve to be there. I could throw Tommy Lahren as another flavor of the month that we can talk about. Everybody loved Tommy Lahren, and then she got into a fight with Glenn Beck, and she hasn't really been seen since, you know, here and there on Fox News and whatever. But she's no longer that ubiquitous person on my Facebook timeline with different videos coming out all the time. That's not Candace Owens. Who knows who it will be in another month or so. This idea of flavor of the month cannot be sustained if you want to grow as a movement, people. But back to Kanye now. To me, Kanye West, obviously he's going to put his foot in his mouth really, really soon. Uh, if he hasn't done it so already. I saw something on TMZ when him and Candace were, I guess, on by TMZ, and he made a comment about slavery now, talking about how, you know, 400 years of slavery, that sounds like a choice to me. Oh, boy. So now the person that you just put up on this pedestal is now the same person who has been quoted as saying that 400 years of slavery was a choice. How does that feel, conservatives, that were, that were you know, lauding the Kanye uh, conservative bump? Doesn't feel too good, does it? That's what you risk when you start talking about flavors of the month. That's the risk of putting someone up on a pedestal who's not been totally vetted yet. You end up with another Milo, another Tommy, a Kanye. My goodness, I never thought I'd be saying this. But this is... I'm getting exasperated, folks, because I think we're better than this. I think we should see already that... Politics is not for, it's not for the uninitiated. I'm not saying that Kanye West can't have an opinion. He can have all the opinions he wants. But as a movement, the opinions that influence you should not be the opinions of a uninitiated, probably evolving thinking person who hasn't had the opportunity to fully grow into their their thought process. I don't know if Kanye is conservative or not. Could he become conservative later on? I think everyone can evolve in their political views and their points of view. I definitely think that's possible. I think he this may be an opening of a door where he'll start listening to other conservative thoughts and, and, and going out there. I like that he's on Twitter showing text messages with with John Legend and them having a a back and forth on things. I think that's healthy. I think that's really good. What I don't think is great is what we see from everyone else on the social medias, which is the putting up on the pedestal versus the burning to the ground. Those that are putting Kanye up on the pedestal are just as wrong as those who are saying that he's an Uncle Tom now that he's, you know, death threats going against him, someone saying that, you know, gang members should find Kanye West and and beat him up. That's not what we should be putting out into the universe, folks. What we should be doing is saying, oh, okay, that's Kanye's opinion. Huh. And then move on. I can't believe this is a discussion we have to have in this day and age, though. And it's the discussion we've been having on the show for many years. Don't be influenced by the voice on the radio, including mine. Find things out for yourself. Inform yourself. You hear an interesting opinion, don't stop there. Go forward and learn more. Find the facts online. Go to primary sources. And do the things you need to do that will lead you to your conclusion. That will lead you to your solution. That will lead you to your own individual point of view. Kanye West. I can't believe this. Listen, we, I gotta take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, I don't know. 
<laughs> maybe some more Kanye. Or maybe we'll talk about what causes people to lose their minds when it comes to celebrity and, and why people think. And this whole idea of who's wearing whose laundry matters when talking about politainment and political thought coming from celebrities. And you'll see that a lot of this is perpetuated by politicians themselves. Gene Berardelli behind enemy lines. We'll be back right after these brief words. Hey, folks, I just want to let you know about a great opportunity for listeners of Behind Enemy Lines Radio. If you go to our website, www.behindenemylinesradio.us, and click on the same box ad on the right side of the page, you will get a great opportunity for a discounted offer to join SaneBox. SaneBox filters out all the unimportant email from your inbox so that you can really focus on what matters. If you're anything like me, folks, you get hundreds of pieces of email a day, not many of which is important. SaneBox's smart filter will get everything you need to fly through your inbox and finally make email work for you. It gets rid of spam emails, it deprioritizes emails that aren't as important to you, and it helps you unsubscribe from mailing lists and individual senders with ease. So again, go to www.behindenemylinesradio.us and you click on the same box ad and you'll be given an exclusive offer you won't find anywhere else. Time for a little music. We call this, What the F*** is Maxine Waters Saying? And to be clear, you believe it would have been better to keep in place an FBI director who you said had no credibility to oversee this investigation than to find someone who you think would be a better choice. No. <laughs> but I believe the president thought that. Don't forget, you're talking about what some Democrats said, what I said, but don't forget, he was the president. The president supported him. He had confidence in him. It was his, it, within his power. And but you said he had no credibility, so it, it would seem to I make did. sense that I, he should absolutely. get rid of him. No. No, no, no. Under investigation, this president basically has interfered with an investigation where he may be implicated. That's outrageous, and that's why we're having so much of a conversation about it today. The bottom line is that you think an FBI director without credibility would have been best served in this position the to, to try to is, pursue this I think, investigation. I think if the president, if the president had fired him when he first came in, uh, he would not have to be in a position now where he's trying to make up a story Understood. about why it does um, not meet the smell test. Yeah, something smells all right. Understood. So if Hillary Clinton had won the White House, would you have recommended that she fire FBI Director James Comey? Well, let me tell you something. If she had won the White House, I believe that given what he did to her and what he tried to do, she should have fired him. So she should have fired him, but he shouldn't have fired him. This is why I'm confused. She, no, it's, it's, no, you're not confused. Uh, yes, I am. Gene Berardelli, back behind enemy lines. Folks, I want to thank you for hanging in with the show for this long. We're a little bit past halftime here, but while you're listening to the show, check us out at www.behindenemylinesradio.us. Check us out on the Facebooks and the Twitters at BEL underscore radio. And if you missed any part of the show, for whatever reason whatsoever, don't worry, we got you covered. You can always listen to the show at one of our rebroadcast outlets, including WJHC Talk 107.5 FM in Jasper, Florida, WDDQ Talk 92.1 FM in Dell, Georgia, and WLBB News Talk 1330 AM in Carrollton, Georgia, all part of the Talk America Radio Network, powered by ICRN, the Internet's conservative radio network, and our good friend Ron Phillips. Shout out to Ron for all the great work he does. You can also check us out at KLRN Radio, Lone Star Talk Radio, and Sackheads Media, Lanterns Radio, check them out at lanterns.buzz, and our newest outlet, Eye to Eye Talk Radio, check them out. They're up and coming, let's give them all the support we can. So that takes care of all the plugs and the promos, and we just got done with Auntie Maxine, uh, the reigning and defending buffoon of the year. So, <laughs> I, I again, I don't plan these things on the show, but who would have thought I'd be talking about Maxine Waters and Kanye West in the same show? 
and they're going to be talking about each other, basically. So, we've been talking about Kanye West and his whole new free thought process and, you know, exploring his conservative side to see whether it fits or not and being a free thinker and all that and encouraging free thought, and that's all very well and good. Well, here comes Maxine Waters to remind us of why we hate liberals, especially in the context of this politatainment that we're getting from Kanye. So Maxine Waters, according to Politico, was in Oakland this past week earlier, uh, and she was asked about uh, Donald Trump touting recent African-American unemployment numbers and this budding bromance with Kanye West, of course. And here's her quote. And it's a little bit long, but hang with me on it. We're going to try to dissect it as best we can because, my, oh my, oh my, there is quite a bit to dissect. So, quote, Kanye West is a very creative young man who has presented some of the most revolutionary material in the African-American community. But we also think that sometimes Kanye West talks out of turn, and perhaps sometimes he needs some assistance in helping him to formulate some of his thoughts. We don't think that he actually means to do harm, but we're not sure he really understands the impact of what he's saying at the time that he's saying it and how that weighs on, particularly the African-American community, and for young people in general. And I think maybe he should think twice about politics and maybe not have so much to say. Maxine Waters, the reigning and defending, and heretofore undefeated, buffoon of the year here on the show. And this set of quotes is exactly why. It's why I can't stand anti-Maxine. It's why I can't stand liberals in general. Let's break it down. So they start with a compliment, right? She starts with a compliment saying, Kanye West, very creative young man, presented some of the most revolutionary material in the African-American community, something most people can agree on that are familiar with his stuff. Fine. But we also think, hmm, 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 we? Who is this we that Maxine Waters is talking about? Who is she claiming to speak on behalf of? I could have sworn that we asked Maxine Waters for her opinion. Right, Politico? Who is this we? It's that hive mind mentality that we've been talking about from the left. We think. The collective thinks. I am a representative of the collective, therefore I am we, and we are me, and me say that we think this. Well, let's see what we think. We also think that sometimes Kanye West talks out of turn. Now, isn't that the height of condescension, folks? Talks out of turn. You know who talks out of turn? Kids interrupting parents at the dinner table. You know who talks out of turn? People at a lecture that are listening to to the speaker speak. You know who talk out of turn? People at a government meeting who have the temerity to question the leaders on the dais. So she's used to this idea of her being above and everybody else being below. But again, this is a liberal set of thinking. You talk out of turn when you don't know what... Uh, my God, you talk, I, 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 I'm flustered already. You talk out of turn because you have an opinion that's different than what we think it should be. The whole we situation means that you're above and you condescend down. So Kanye West talks out of turn and perhaps sometimes he needs some assistance in helping him to formulate some of his thoughts. Now, far be it from me to make a plantation politics comparison, the way that Kanye West does. But doesn't this sound like a person corralling in something else that's lower than them? We've already got the condescension of talking out of terms. So we've already established this hierarchy where Maxine Waters is on top and Kanye West is below. Where Maxine Waters is superior and Kanye West is I- inferior. And now the inf- the superior one has to provide the assistance to the inferior one to help him formulate some of his thoughts. Open your mind, Kanye, and think exactly like the hive mind. Open your mind and think exactly like Maxine Waters. That's what she's trying to say. And go back to the beginning again and think about the discussion, how it started. Contributions to the African-American community. Maxine Waters is an African-American congresswoman. Kanye West is an African-American artist. 
all of this has connotations 